Hello out there in YouTube land. Welcome back to our channel. Today we are going to do, I guess, an epic foundation video. Yeah, we've been asked about, you know, the many foundations that we've experienced, like tried to and use. And how to judge your undertone and things like that. So right. we decided to kind of incorporate it into the, the same video for the hopes that it kind of satisfies everybody's foundation curiosities. So this is going to be kind of a long one. Um, brace yourselves. We have a lot of notes, so we apologize beforehand for reading because I don't even think a teleprompter would help with this. No! <laughs> no. There's a lot of foundations to go through <sighs> and a lot of notes on them that we've just, you know, things Compiled that... and noticed yeah. about the different ones we've tried. Um, so in general, one of the viewers had asked if we could do a discussion of undertones. And... I don't classify undertones the way that most companies do because I come from an art background and I'm used to using color wheels and things like that, mm -hmm. which means that I have a knowledge of what they call color theory. Right. And that's actually really important because when you're mixing together pigments, things are arranged by color theory and not by is this only a cool undertone or warm undertone or whatever. So, the way I classify undertones is that you have cool pink, cool tan, cool grayish blue, and cool green, which would be like super fair olive complexions. Mm -hmm. Then you have neutral pink, neutral tan, neutral yellow, neutral gray blue, and neutral green, which neutral green would be more of your light to medium olive skin tones. Right. And then warm yellow, warm peach, warm red, warm brown. Now, we're going to try to make a point with this one. Um, here is your cool gray blue undertone. And some people can almost say it's a little bit silvery, too. Yeah. Um, and that happens in both very fair complected and also very deeply complected skin tones. So it runs the gamut of, you know, something like uh, somebody like us to some of the remarkably beautiful African American women and models. Some of the yes. models are just absolutely gorgeous, but they have an extremely deep cool undertone and we've noticed that most companies aren't bothering to make foundations to remotely match that. And this undertone is incredibly unique. It's it has to do a lot with genetics. Um but the fact that it remains, you know, a lot of these shades are not being created for undertone as much as they are for your warm, neutral, cool. And the reason why, that we think anyway, is that it's much less expensive to make things yellow, orange, and red because they use iron oxide, which is a very inexpensive product. And in order to get the other shades, you can't use iron oxide, otherwise you'll end up with kind of an orange look right. or a yellow look. So, so that's where they slip more into kind of the silica and titanium based foundations is when they need to lighten things up. And I don't know about you all, but I've never ever seen an actual orange person. No. I, I've seen orange foundation. NARS has one. I've seen some really bad tanning <laughs> jobs. <laughs> but I have tan. never seen bright orange. No. And it just kills me. And a lot of people, when you're talking about what skin looks like without a foundation on, I actually have rosacea, so I have a lot of redness that I have to deal with. And for that, that iron oxide is not optimal at all. No. Because it can actually either make you orange or it can really turn you yellow. And so when we are at a store and wanting to try and judge shade range on us, we tend to use our inner wrists because our necks and our upper, upper decolletage are the same color as the inside of our wrist. Right. So, you know, the inside of my wrist, as you can see, is pretty freaking pale, as is hers. Right. So that's where we judge our coloring because we know that it'll be a very close to what this area is. Now, if you're someone that has, you know, like a darker skin on your neck than you do your face or something, you're probably going to want to match the area on your neck because you don't want to have that weird, like, dark here, pale here, or, right. you know, reversed. It's going to look weird. 
And it also depends on what you're wanting to do. You know, if you want to go for a more goth look, then you're going to actually, you know, go up a shade lighter. Or, a or if shades. you're looking for, like, kind of a... Because I've seen some really cool looks with deeper skin tones that right. use the regular foundation, but then they add, like, you know, bits of sparkle and stuff. But mm -hmm. pertaining to foundation in general, I think everyone has problems finding foundation to match the proper undertone. I, I agree, and that's that's what leads us to this absolute monster of a foundation list. We yes. have been trying to find a good foundation, one that you don't have to mix, one that you don't have to use a shade here, a shade here, and a shade here to get something resembling your face. Yeah. Um, and it's ridiculous. It, I, mean, I mean, we've been at this for years. She can remember... And I can remember back in the 90s when really the only thing we had to do was go to the grocery store or, you know, the big box store and just pick the palest shade on the little docket and find something that was relatively close. Because back then, a lot of the foundations actually used the ingredients that tended to give foundations kind of a grayer cast. Right. And while they did a horrible job at shade range for people of darker complexions, they're now only concentrating on pretty much the middle scope and cutting out everyone that has a super deep skin tone and everyone that has a super pale skin tone. Right, and it's, it's really frustrating. I mean, like I said, we have been at this for... Over four years. Yeah. And just going through all of this, this it's list. It's crazy. And but prior to that, like, I was using theatrical makeup where I would mix it constantly. And that's sad to have to use theatrical makeup just to have a foundation to match your skin tone. And I use Clinique, but unfortunately, you know, and we'll go through this list, I use, on occasion, the Redness Solutions, and it's wonderful for rosacea patients. But their color range is incredibly limited. It's it's almost unworkable. Maybe? Unworkable. <laughs> so. I mean, there's a lot more. That, I think Ulta carries four shades of it. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot more colors of the human race than four than shades. Than four shades. So, so let's dive into it. <laughs> I mean, you know, in general, before we really get into if you want to know how to decide your undertone, I'll be linking below a color wheel where you can tell whether you're cool or warm and mm -hmm. kind of judge when you go to, like, my suggestion would be to go to, like, Lowe's or any other hardware store and look at paint swatches and find one that actually matches your skin tone. Yeah. Because the, from there, you can find out whether you're cool, warm, or neutral. Because the little guidelines online, like they say, well, you, if you have green veins, then you're warm. If you have blue veins, mm. you're cool. Some of my veins are green, some are purple, and some are blue. blue. You know, it doesn't work very well. No. <laughs> and the same thing with jewelry. I, you know, we're, our skin tone, we can wear both gold and silver. silver. But we're neutral, but not exactly. So that doesn't ring true either. It, it, we're cool and we're neutral. I mean, if I were to yeah. take everything off, I still have that bluish, silvery undertone. Yeah. So. Okay. So the very first foundation I'll talk about <laughs> is the Kat Von D Locket Foundation. And I've tried shades 41, 42, and 44. They've added a 43, but it's very yellow. 41 is a good ghost color, if, or if I actually want to look like a vampire. 42 is perfect for her and I sometimes. Sometimes mm -hmm. it absolutely matches 100%. Other times it'll totally ghost us out. I don't know if that's just our own reactions to the world around us and like having issues with our skin, right. or if it's just the reaction of the foundation to our chemistry, but it's an oddity. And, you know, and then the next cool shade up from that is 44, which is way too deep for us. Yeah, it actually, I mean, it just, you <laughs> it, look like yeah. you're wearing foundation. I mean, there's that definite, so. definite line. That, and, you know, a lot of people say, yeah, but blend it down on your neck. Yeah, but when this is white and you, right. <laughs> you're still going to see it. It doesn't work. Uh, the next couple of foundations we tried were uh, actually from Too Faced, and it was the Born This Way, and we were using a lot of snow, and then they came out with Cloud. 
who would have thought that the shade snow, pink white, has an orange undertone? It did. And after a while, it just did not work. And no. cloud is mostly just a straight white. And while that's very good for when you want to, you know, vamp out or, you know, go really into your like style Like super that day, extreme, like alternative look. If you're, you know, just wanting to do an everyday thing and like you have to go to work and you can't do the right. extreme makeup where you work, it doesn't work very well. The next thing is was actually the first foundation we tried when we decided we were going to dive into the realm of we're going to find a foundation to fit right. our skin tone. We don't care how much it costs, we're going to find one. As you Not can see, that one. didn't work out very well. Mm -hmm. Neither did this. Uh, it was the Max Studio Fix, and we tried both NW10 and NC10. NW10 was close, but a bit too dark. And C10, you could barely tell the difference between the two. It was supposed to be a yellow undertone. Right. But it wasn't quite, which normally would be a good thing for us. It just wasn't quite, the, we just couldn't find a match. And adversely, <laughs> this thing had, this foundation is supposed to have a year shelf life. Yeah. At seven months, Danny actually texted me and said, <laughs> smell your foundation. I'm like, Say what? <laughs> so I go in and I smell this foundation. It smells like spoiled rotten meat. That went in the garbage. Uh, yeah. And I almost tossed know, my cookies. It was, it was, it was bad. bad. <laughs> it was just flat horrible. So then we started trying to think, okay, where do we go from here? And we started out looking at the <sighs> shade F1 from Makeup Revolution Conceal and Define. It transferred incredibly bad, even with setting spray. And it was too yellow. Was I know they now have come out with more shades, but honestly, with as badly as it transferred, and the fact that even though it's supposed to be a vegan foundation, after a certain amount of time, it started getting that rotten meat smell too, and I don't understand what's causing that. And I don't know if that's just... And we use clean brushes. You know, Constantly. It's not like we touch the bottle to our faces no. directly. No. I don't know if it just has some sort of separation of an ingredient in there or... And we don't have that with a lot of other foundations. It's just no. specifically those two ended up stinking like that. And we're like, what on earth and it is that? it could be one of like the, you know, the minerals that they use. As the it base. could be. We don't know. But it's an oddity. Um, then I was like, okay, I'm going to try drugstore stuff exclusively because this is getting ridiculous. <laughs> So I tried Maybelline's uh, Fit Me Matte and Poreless in the shade 110. Supposedly full coverage. Yeah. Didn't matter how many layers I applied to my face, it didn't cover the redness on my yeah. cheeks. That's a problem. And so. then we extended that out to <laughs> the Maybelline Super Stay in Light Porcelain 102. And that was better than the matte and poreless, but not full coverage at all, and it is marketed to be so. So it was not a super stay-on foundation. You had no. to build it, and it transferred. And, you know, it's like, if you're going to call something full coverage, I mean, I understand necessarily it's not going to have enough coverage to, like, say, cover a very deep colored tattoo or something. Right. But it's not like the redness on our faces is extensive. It's not like we are someone that has like a birthmark or something like that. We just have some redness on our cheeks. And when that foundation won't even cover that, it's a problem. Yeah. Um, so then I tried the L'Oreal Total Cover in Classic Ivory. And it was a, actually a really close cover match. The problem was that it melted off my face. Literally. <laughs> and that was with setting spray. And then it had the nice, lovely combination of giving me giant sits. Yeah. So that was an epic fail. And then we <sighs> kind of went to the L'Oreal Freshwear Infallible in 400 and 395. 400 was a bit too yellow. 395 was a bit too pink. Um, that one doesn't transfer too horribly. But... It's not particularly matte, and your face will get really shiny with it. And, you know, because of both Tabby and my health problems, 
we don't have extensively oily faces anymore. And so for us to have a foundation that makes us look oily by the end of the day, it's kind of like, okay, something in this doesn't jive with our skin very well. Right. It's not... It just didn't work. So then I was like, okay, we're having trouble with full coverage. Let's go for what's marketed as the most full coverage foundation on the market. And I picked up the real, authentic Dermacol 208. The problem is... It has an oil base, which in general wouldn't seem too bad if you have drier skin, but immediately it looked like an oily, greasy mess. It looked like you hadn't washed your face for a couple of days. Yeah. I mean, it was just not good. And then when Tabby put it on, she had immediate allergic reaction. <laughs> I have, like most pale women and men, I have very sensitive skin, so... If I put something on and it causes an immediate rash and redness, I'm taking that off. Yeah. Immediately. So then uh. we kind of switched over to Fenty Beauty. Um, and it's a Pro Filter small, Soft Matte Long Wear Foundation in shade 110. And the color is just a bit off. It's a bit too much white. And again, yeah. you get into that area where if you want something for every day, you don't want to look like a ghost. Um, the and other the bad thing is other streaks. You know, and the, the deeper colors in that go too deep. Mm -hmm. So there's like this jump between what's neutral and cool and fair and then light to medium almost. It, it, we couldn't find a color in the range to match us at all. And the other bad thing is you have to work that foundation a lot yeah. to get it to blend. Otherwise, it looks like you literally... Duck your face in a cake. And, so, you know, added to that, trying to get rid of brush marks. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's just not a good foundation. At least for us, anyway. We know some people that it works amazing for, but for mm -hmm. us, it was an epic fail. Um, so then I try, decided, well, you know, Tabby's, you know, praised Clinique for years, and they had come out with new shades and even better makeup. And they finally came out with a shade that was marketed as being perfect for super fair skin. Right. Called Shell. And I was like, okay, I'll give this a try. Oh boy. It's super pale yellow. And, you know, on someone with my skin tone, that just basically makes me look like I have jaundice. Yeah. <laughs> and then added to that, within three hours, it had melted off my skin. And this is with primer. This is not like we're just putting makeup on our faces. This is with primer and Urban Decay All Nighter Setting Spray. I mean, right. it's ridiculous. And also by Clinique, they came out with a Beyond Perfecting Foundation um, and also concealer combination and Shell Breeze and Bone. Those are three different colors we tried. <laughs> and despite what they are marketed as, they were not a full coverage for us. You couldn't no. quite get rid of the red. Um, and again, all of the colors were really too yellow, and Shell was the only one that was light enough, but it was still on that yellow range. And, so you it know, it's, 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 I don't know what we can do to get companies to stop assuming that everyone that's pale is yellow. <laughs> really, for redness, if you think about what you're going for, you want almost a hint of green. Yes, because... Green cancels out red. Right. And that goes back to your artistic color wheel. Yes, it's very important. And I don't know why companies aren't following it, truthfully. I don't know. Um, so then we tried the Jouer Essential High Coverage Cream Foundation. And the shade Alabaster is the closest that we could found, find to our skin tone, but it was too orangish. They have other shades that are light, but when we tried them, they just didn't remotely match. I, no. It was just kind of a mess. And then they were supposed to be, it was supposed to be another one of those super full coverage. And we kept having to make layers to cover the redness. And it's like, this is getting really insane and ridiculous. And the list continues. Yes. So I actually, and what I'm wearing today, which is not ideal for me. Because you can actually see, if you pull the side, yep. her skin tone's pretty fair. Outside the redness. So, and that is just from, I'm Irish, I'm Scotch-Irish, and I'm also, I have rosacea. Okay. So my skin burns really easy yes. and things like that. 
I've always reached for Clinique Redness Solutions, and I use the shade Alabaster. Um, it's my favorite for coverage. It's not irritating at all to my skin, but it doesn't come in a pale enough shade. I need a shade lighter. Because, unfortunately, Tabby ends up wearing a shade that's too dark for her face, but you can clearly see there's an odd demarcation between her face and mm -hmm. her neck, and there's not much you can do with it. No, especially when you have something that works with the rosacea yeah. that's marketed for it, actually, that, you know, they really spent a ton of time on. I do not know why they don't have the shade range. I don't either. And they don't even have any shades for anyone that has a really deeper skin no. tone. It's all medium, pretty much. There's nothing for anyone that is even, I would say, um, of like... Uh, from India originally or anything like right. that. There, it's just all just kind of medium skin tones. And let me tell you, just as an aside, if you think that goth has to be pale, uh-uh. No! There are some beautiful ladies and men yes. that, you know, do the gothic look. That and knock it out of the park. Skin. Uh, yeah, I mean, knock it completely out of the there's park. There's this <laughs> one alternative model from France, and I forget her name offhand, but I believe her... Instagram is something like Fractale or something like that, and she does the most amazing looks that I've seen in a long time. Just beautiful. Yes. And, you know... It makes me jealous. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. So, then I decided, okay, Smash Mouth... Uh, smash Mouth. Smash Mouth. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I need to think about a little bit of music this afternoon. Yeah. Um, they came out with more shades in their Studio Skin Hydrating Foundation. So I tried 0 0.5, which was what the palest was that they had at the store. And the shade was okay. It could have used a touch of gray or blue, but it was workable in terms of color, but it transferred easily. And, you know, you don't want makeup getting all over your clothes when you're, even if you're wearing setting spray and powder and everything like that. It's just not workable. No, it's not. And the thing is, Smashbox is pretty good on price range. Yeah, but they it's are. just not a workable foundation. And now we have another one. We have another one, and it's actually from Korea. And I'm going to pronounce it IQ. Uh, triple wear in the shade Frozen. And no, we're not going to cue Let It Snow. No. It's a really good foundation. It didn't transfer. No. Um, the color is pretty much perfect, but there's a downside, and that was the extreme perfumey smell, and it isn't available anymore. So we actually had a foundation that we could pretty much use, but they quit making it. Yeah. Yeah. Go figure. Thanks a lot. So then we had seen online where a couple YouTubers were recommending the Flower Beauty Light Illusion Foundation because it had a nice finish. So we thought, well, what the heck? Right. And their shade Porcelain was more like a pale apricot than it was porcelain. And it turned bright orange in a matter of minutes on my face. It wasn't pretty. No. And even if you mix it with other foundations, it turns this orange too. Right, and I don't know. You know what we else. do. We have played with a lot of mixing of foundations. Yeah, and trying to get that shade match. And, and I think that's the work. first one that I've seen that actually turned the other foundations orange, though. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it was, was epic. I uh, believe Beauty had one had a shade called Linen, and that was a bright yellow. I've yeah. never seen yellow, you know, linen <laughs> out spots, but it was. Yeah. Then we tried Wet n Wild, figuring, well, let's go to the like extreme end of the most affordable foundations, and did the shade Porcelain. It wasn't too bad of a match, but it had a horrible smell like house paint. Yeah. And it wasn't full coverage, and my redness still showed through, so it wasn't worthwhile to keep going. So IT Cosmetics <laughs> put out a full coverage uh, foundation in the shade Fair. I think beyond anything, it was such a greasy mess. It was just horrible. It, it felt streaked. like you had smeared your face with cooking oil. Yeah. And the color was like a buttercup yellow. On mm -hmm. us. It was bad. And so then we tried NARS Radiant Longwear Foundation in the shade Oslo. 
it's not full coverage the way it's adversi adver advertised. Advertised. I can't talk today. It wasn't light enough, so it was so pink that it looked like that we were essentially putting pale pink paint on our faces. I mean, seriously. Yeah, it was not good. So then we also tried the NARS All Day Luminous Weightless <laughs> Foundation <laughs> in the shade Siberia. And apparently... That means pale yellow. They mean pale yellow. Apparently. Even though people Maybe they that I've... On the snow. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> people I've seen from Siberia are not pale yellow. I know. So no. I don't know. Um, so then we tried Marc Jacobs' Remarkable Full Coverage Serum whatever in the shade 10. Now... It was full coverage, I'll give it that. It was totally full coverage. But it was probably the most transferring foundation I think we've tried. Literally, you yeah. would touch your face and you'd have like a mask of white on whatever it is that you put your face against. Your and cell you phone was you a mess. You would literally see you know, the mark off your, your face. I mean, it was awful. Yeah. And the coloring was also too pale. It was another one that was like white, but we couldn't use it. It was just a mess. So then we moved into cover effects and looking at their power play foundations uh, in the shade M0. Yeah. It was a really odd, odd undertone. It was the right paleness, but still didn't match, and it also did not cover well at all. So I don't know if it just didn't agree with our skin or what, but it didn't work. So then I tried the Too Faced Peach Person perfect foundation. I had an argument with the sales lady at Sephora about it because she kept saying it was full coverage even though the website mm -mm. says it's medium, which I knew, but I figured what the heck, if I could find something that I could maybe build up, right? what the heck. So the shade cloud was as ghostly as it always was, but every other color they had didn't match. And it worked sort of for a while. Right. And then when it got toward the end of the tube, even though I shook up the tube and everything like that, it started to get very strange and creasy and creaky. Or not creaky, but streaky. I'm getting too many E's. <laughs> uh, but it just, it did not work well. No. And it, it also got... The problem is when you have scented products and that scent starts to run out, it gets a really medicine-y smell to yeah. it. So we also looked at Milani Conceal and Perfect um, 1A in Porcelain. That broke up. It had major, major transfer, and it was still too dark. And they have now recently extended the shade range further, Right. so there's a chance we could actually find a color that would match. However, with as much as it transferred and everything, it's kind of like, well, the formula didn't work, so no sense in spending money on it. So then I tried the Oom Uoma, I'm not sure how you say the name, I'm sorry. Um, no. <laughs> Beauty Say What Foundation in the shade T1N. And it transferred and it was still too dark. It was a funny too dark though. It was slightly like it was, um, it had too, like, I wouldn't say almost too much gray, but the shade of gray that they used made the color too dark for my skin. Yeah. It was just an odd one. It gave it almost an ashen yeah. look, and that's not... Unless you're going for a specific look that night, that's not what you want to wear all the way no. out. No. Um, we've moved back into L'Oreal just again, because they came out with the True Match um, N.5. While we knew this one wasn't a full coverage, it was marketed to cover redness, so, you know... We thought, what the heck. What the heck. It didn't. No. Not even in the least. No. So then I decided while well, everyone was talking about the whole CYO life proof thing and how the Soap and Glory Foundation is the same thing, so I figured, mm -hmm. well, I'll give that a shot. So the Soap and Glory Kick Ass All Day Foundation in the palest shade 02W is way too dark and made my face oily. However, if you mix it with the Fenty Beauty Foundation, it actually works. So I don't know what you want to say about that, but... If you yeah. want to do it a science experiment every morning, by all means, yeah. it takes away. I don't do that in the morning. It's my I, job we don't have time. Day. <laughs> <laughs> I do enough science in a day. I don't need that in no. the morning. Um, we moved into BH Cosmetics Naturally Flawless Foundation. And that was in the shade 201. 
it streaked very oddly on your face and it transferred. The color was decent, and that's about really all I can say about it. Yeah, now if they would put that color in several of the other formulas that actually stayed well and stuff, we'd be happy as clams, but it just didn't work. It just didn't. So then we decided to try the e.l.f. Flawless Finish Foundation in the shade Pearl. I unfortunately cannot tell you anything about this foundation because the perfume in it was so bad it gave me an immediate asthma attack and I had to throw it in the garbage. And again, why you would put a lot of perfumes in these foundations, that's not a good thing and it's actually an irritant on your it skin. It is. So anyone that has sensitive skin, it's a really good idea to stop using products that have fragrance in them. And, you know, with so many people having more and more allergies every day, these companies really need to think about putting fragrance in their products. And really, when you think about it, the carrier a lot of times is an alcohol-based thing that they put the fragrance in, and you really don't want that on your face. No. So moving into Physician's Formula, um, the Healthy Foundation shade in LC1 uh, smelled like rotten meat again and was too dark. And I don't put <laughs> rotten meat on my face, no. so we're not doing it. <laughs> So then we tried the ColourPop Natural Matte Foundation in the shade Fair 10. It was streaky and patchy, and whatever we did, we couldn't get it to look nice. No, even if you built it. I mean, I saw Jeffree Star use it, and he, it looked wonderful on his skin, so it must just be something with our skin that didn't right. jive with it, but it was just not a good foundation for us. Uh, Illamasqua Skin Base 2. While billed as medium coverage foundation, it does look beautiful for yeah. a while, but then halfway through your day, it's transferring and it's breaking up. So you're either going to have to reapply your makeup in the middle of your day or just give this one a miss. Yeah. So then I ordered the uh, Etude House, which is a Korean skincare brand, uh, their double lasting foundation in the shade Rosy Pure. It's very slightly too dark, so, you know, I could deal with that, but it oxidizes, so it turned bright orange on me, and mm -hmm. it just got oily within an hour. Yeah. <laughs> so and that just, wasn't a good move. Your face doesn't feel good with some of these. No. You want something that you can go through your day and it feels like your natural skin. So Lancome has a Tent Idol Longwear Foundation in shades 110, 140, 210. And 210 was a great undertone for us, but the shade was way too dark and we never could find a true color match, which was astounding given that their color range is huge. And, you know, we kept going to the store that had it and the ladies there kept trying and they couldn't match us they either. They couldn't match. So then we tried the Estee Lauder Double Wear in the shade 1C1 Cool Bone, and it was too dark. We know that there's another bone shade available, but there's nowhere else to try it, because nowhere no. carries that shade in store, and so we just kind of stopped trying. Urban Decay makes so many good things, and we tried their all-nighter foundations. Um, doesn't matter the shade. We put it on our skin, it goes immediately to oxidation and orange. And the Burt Bees Goodness Glows Foundation turns a strange shade of yellow in about 30 seconds on us. So, I was in San Diego not too long ago and ended up going to the MAC store because I thought, let's give this a shot, they can match me. So I ended up getting the MAC Pro Long Longwear Foundation in NW13, beautiful match, gave me the most horrific rash I think I have ever experienced. She had sent me pictures and that rash took, what, five days to clear up? Five days to clear and it was welted on my skin. I mean, just welts. It was awful. So then we decided, um, if I remember right, it was somebody that you used to know at work, his wife had died and so he had yes. given you... Um, the unused Josie Marin, Marin Vibrancy Foundation that his wife had had, and it was in the shade Dynamic, which if you look on the website, that's the palest shade. Tabby tried it on herself, and it turned bright orange immediately, and she's yeah. like, this is expensive foundation. Here, Danny, see if it does the same thing to you, because if it doesn't, then that would be something you could wear, and it's, you know, a whole bunch of free foundation. It turned bright orange on me, and then we tried it on my mother, and it turned bright orange on her. 
I mean, it just went orange, and I don't know if that's because they use kind of an olive oil component in there or not. I, I don't, don't know. know. I know that my mother has totally different skin right. from Tabby and I, so it was just interesting that there's three of us, and it did that. Um, so that leaves us with a relatively short list that we currently use, um, and those are L'Oreal Freshwear in shades 400 and 295. Clinique Redness Solutions in Alabaster and Kat Von D Locket Foundation in shade 42, being very careful of what primer we actually use on our faces because yes. that is important with that particular foundation. Because if you use a, four, a poor filling primer with the Kat Von D, at least for Tabby and I, we would end up with horrible, almost cystic acne. But right. if we use like a hydrating primer or a primer oil, it's fine, nothing happens. So there must be some sort of chemical reaction between the foundation and the pore filling primer that causes a reaction to our skin. And it could just be where that foundation is, you know, particularly matte and it's yeah. just drying your skin really fast. So there's our epic list of foundations that we have tried and our reasons that they work or don't work. Um, if there's something that you have tried that we have not, comment down below if you think it might work for us because we are always on the lookout and are still on the hunt for our, you know, holy grail foundation. And thank you for listening <laughs> to this very long tutorial yes. on the many tries and fails that we've had with this, with the makeup realm. So until next time. Bye. bye.